just even the thought that it's November and then tomorrow is Christmas and then it's 2025 has me spiraling. So let's talk about the books I'm going to read. and today I'm here to talk about all of the books that I plan to read in the month of November. I always look forward to the month of November for reading because I feel like it's kind of like a like a reset but like a self check. Does that make sense? Like I said in the month of October, October is like the Super Bowl for reading at least in my eyes because I feel like I hype myself up and I prepare for spooky reads and then November comes and it's like oh read whatever you want don't give in to any pressure so i feel like it's just like a huge master reset as far as my reading but it's also kind of like a self-check reality check because we don't have much longer in 2024 and the thought of saying 2025 just gives me the major ick so let's talk about the books that i have obligations to reading plans all those fun things grab a snack let's go i don't want to hear any ifs ands or buts we are talking about sleep when i'm dead specifically the last one at the wedding by jason reculak i am so excited i've had this one for quite some time i have the audiobook ready to go I have read Hidden Pictures what seems like forever ago, so to know I have the newest release, I'm so excited. This one is going to be interesting specifically for our main character's point of view just because it's a father, kind of like an older father whose daughter is getting married. And there's some weird feelings behind that. But like I said, this is the November Sleep When I'm Dead book club discussion. I will have the graphic right here. It's going to be me, Gabby from Gabbing About Books, and Keely from Vampire Keely. If you don't know what my book club is, here's a little rundown. Each month we talk about a newer release thriller book. And I have a Discord where we chat about it all month. You can submit questions for the book discussion. And then we come here last Monday of the month and we chat about the book. So what is this book about? This one says it's been three years since Frank last heard from his daughter and he's devastated by their long unhappy estrangement. But then an unexpected phone call from Maggie changes everything. She says she's getting married and she wants her father to walk her down the aisle. Frank is overjoyed by the news. Here at last is a chance of reconciliation, a perfect opportunity to repair their fractured relationship. But a disturbing discovery about his future son-in-law leads Frank to wonder if Maggie is making a terrible mistake. And once he arrives at the wedding, an extravagant three-day affair set at a luxurious lakefront estate, the warning signs keep piling up. Can Frank unravel the truth about Maggie's fiance before it's too late? I'm so excited. I don't know, something about like a thriller in a wedding? So if you didn't know, I actually have a Patreon and over there, not only are you supporting me, but me and other fellow patrons, we have the best time movie watches, buddy reads. And now we are doing our very first Paul Print Pal Patreon readathon. It is a Friendsgiving themed readathon. I'm going to save the details of the readathon for those who have joined Patreon, which if you're interested, link is down below. But one of the main like topics about this readathon is friendship and so it's funny because i'm actually going to be reading a book that i have not read but i recommended one of my best friends to read that book is the bright side running club by josie lloyd so i actually had a video Ooh, my battery's dying if you ever want a tip on making youtube videos have a second battery i did a video where i had my youtube members who are now my patrons actually give me questions on like what type of books i should recommend them and probably i'm pretty sure the only one i did not have a strong recommendation of a book that i personally read was my friend gwen from gwendolyn kinsinger so i actually looked up a book and this one just sounded so good so i recommended it to her she did go out and buy it but she has not read it so i'm gonna read it first in hopes that i made a good recommendation this one just sounds like it's going to have such strong like emotions out of it this one says when kiera first receives her breast cancer diagnosis she never expects to end up joining a running club with three women she only just met totally blindsided all she can think about is how she doesn't want to tell her family or step back from work 
nor does she want to be a part of a group of fellow cancer patients. Cancer is not her club. And yet In Running is a company of brilliant, funny women all going through treatment that unexpectedly gives Kira that hope that she urgently needs. Because Kira will not be defined by the C word. And now with the Cancer Ladies Running Club cheering her on, she's going to reclaim everything, her family, her identity, and her life, one step at a time. So this just sounds like it's gonna be like all the emotions, like sad, uplifting, like comforting in a way. I don't know, it just sounds really good. So I'm so excited to read this one for my readathon and also maybe kind of like secure my recommendation to my friends. So. I'm super excited. This is going to be my friendship book for the month of November. Now listen, <laughs> I said this one time and I have several friends who are like, are you going to read this book? Are you going to read this book? Are you going to read this book? I had said I really wanted to reread one of my favorite books of all time. It's 850 pages. I love this book so much with all of my heart and soul. I remember reading it in 2020 and just thought, oh my gosh, I freaking love this book so much. This is 112263 by Stephen King. It is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. It really did bring so much joy to me during the pandemic in 2020. And I said I wanted to reread it specifically in the month of November. And I realized it's 112263. So like, I should probably read it in the month of November. I know Stephen King is not for everyone, but I'm telling you, this is probably, like if you would, like if I would have read this blindly, not knowing who wrote this, and you told me it was Stephen King, I would have laughed in your face because this is so different from King. And I just, oh, it's so, so good. So in a nutshell, this is about a guy who gets the opportunity to go back in time. Um, to 1958 I believe is the year 1958 and he is able to go on this mission to try to stop the assassination of JFK anytime he tries to go back it is always the same time in 1958 so he has to spend five years until the assassination and there's like a lot of like beautiful characters there's all this side story and meaning behind everything. I do plan to take a trip starting next week. So maybe I might make this like my road trip book. I'm just so excited to read this one. So, but I'm also scared because it's so big, but I love this book so much. <laughs> Speaking of other books that aren't usually my type of books because I'm shocked this is my favorite book, but I am so excited to read a book of the month book that I've had on my shelf for several months and it's a little fantasy maybe I don't know it's called The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer I know this one is loved by so many I am reading this one because my friend Jordan from Sorry Book Solid she actually read this book and I think she gave it four or five stars and she recommended it because it's not fantasy but like it also has like a game element I believe so I'm going into this one completely blind so I would read the synopsis to you but I kind of want to go into this one knowing little to nothing so I also forgot to mention I have all these physical books but I'm actually getting a new Kindle um this is my current one this is the paper white from like 20 2021 I believe but I actually splurged and treated myself to the new color soft one it's actually supposed to be here tomorrow on the first so I do plan on doing like some sort of like video based on that book so make sure you keep an eye out for that so probably some of these books will also be on my kindle so I don't know I'm, am I a kindle girly I don't know another book that's been on my shelf for a while and I just keep like ignoring it is Lisa Joel's The House We Grew Up In. The only thing I know about this book is that it has like hoarding, like hoarding. I'm really excited to read this one because I've heard such great things and I do love Lisa Joel's writing, but for some reason I just never gravitate towards them. So I definitely wanna read this one because this is like, I feel like not a whole lot of people talk about this one. So plus I think the thought of like a thriller that has like hoarding in it, sounds really interesting so i'm very excited to read this one bringing back gwen again she has talked so highly of 
this book series. There's only two books in the series that as of right now, but it is None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. And this is a YA type of book. And I'm like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that bestie. But she told me if you liked The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And if you like like um, CIS or law, if you like Criminal Minds and like Hannibal Lecter, you would like this one. So, and it takes place in my state, which is kind of interesting. Two teenagers, serial killer survivor Emma Lewis and U.S. Marshal candidate Travis Bell are recruited by the FBI to interview convicted juvenile killers and provide insight on cold cases. From the start, Emma and Travis develop a quick friendship convincing juvenile murders to talk when even the FBI can't get them to crack. But when the team is called in to give advice on an active case, a serial killer who exclusively hunts teenagers, everything begins to unravel. Working against the clock, they must turn to one of the country's most notorious incarcerated murderers for help. Teenage sociopath Simon Gutmanson. I think that's how you say his name. Sounds really good. The other one is Some Shall Break, I believe. And I'm not sure what the third book's going to be. But Gwen like fiercely read both books back to back and she has just talked highly about them so i'm gonna give it a try so bestie i hope i like it also speaking of gwen this is a book that she gave me for my birthday it is the drowning woman by robin harding i've heard really good things only by a select few people i haven't heard anything negative or people talking about this one in general but the people who have read it said they loved it i don't even know what this one is about i just know gwen really liked it a few of my other friends have liked it this one says a delicious twisted story of Friendship, reputation, and betrayal of a homeless woman fleeing a dangerous past. And the wealthy society wife she saves from drowning who pulls her into a dark web of secrets and lies. So I think this one also would fit really well with my with my readathon. So I'm really excited to read this one too. So yeah. So yeah, those are all the books that I immediately have plans for. Again, I am kind of using November to just read whatever I want, but these are the ones that are like really high on my priority list and I'm so excited to read these. So yeah, those are all my reading plans. I cannot wait to read them. Hopefully I have all five stars. I know that's like really, really stretching it. But I'm hoping November is a good month for me and for you. Before we leave, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. It really does help support my channel. Also, if you would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is always in the description of my videos. And if you've made it this far, hmm, leave a turkey emoji because it's Thanksgiving in the States. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand.